Hey everyone, I hope you're taking it easy and your day has been great thus far. For this video, we'll be going through an unboxing and review of Studio Series Deluxe Class Cliff Jumper. And Cliff Jumper was the 64th release of the line. And this version of Cliff is from the Transformers Bumblebee live action movie, uh, which was out several years ago and obviously released by good old Takara Tommy Hasbro. Um, around 2020 I believe. So thought I'd do a quick intermission between the two Decepticon triple changes uh, with Cliff Jumper. Um, one because I thought it was somewhat ironic and two because the B127 figure is basically a re-deco of Cliff Jumper. This should hopefully be a really quick video. So there we go. So with that out of the way, here we have the front of the packaging for Cliff Jumper. Nice little CGI art of Cliff here in the corner, which is pretty much stock stand for Zero Series. Uh, Cliff, obviously, back in the day of lots of plastic packaging. Now, I will admit, color scheme wise, I do like this a bit more than B127, but I'm also very much a red and black person, so it's not a big surprise. Uh, so that's front of the box, side of the box, just a shot of Cliff again with the Studio Series logo, the number and Deluxe class, and more CGI art. In terms of the back, 20 step conversion between robot mode and his Cybertronian I was going to say sedan, may or may not be correct, Cybertronian alt mode. Um, so that should be really cool. Obviously we'll get the backdrop of God of Cybertron Falls, which we've seen enough times. And yeah, and in fact, what do we have as the blurb? As the battle on Cybertron rages, Cliff Jumper and his fellow Autobots are overwhelmed by the Decepticon attacks, which is very true. Now, hopefully the transformation won't take me too long because one, I have done it before and hopefully I can be a touch on the lucky side. Anyway, box done. Let's get Cliff Jumper out of it. And with everything out of the packaging, what do we have? So we have the one accessory, which we're getting quite familiar with seeing. We have one Cliff Jumper and I'm already getting flashbacks to this mold already. The manual and off screen is the backdrop. So, not that I really need to. I've seen this backdrop so many times. Uh, backdrop, cliff jumper, cliff jumper with backdrop. Now, surprisingly, the deluxes actually do look quite nice against their backdrop. The voyages weren't too bad, but um, because the voyages were also larger and half the voyages were Decepticons, they had this nice amount of stuff on their back which made this a bit difficult. Uh, but Cliff Jumper looks like he's going okay with his scenic base, so that's that. Um, will I try and get a few shots of the scenic base with Cliff Jumper later on? Probably. So, accessory, Cliff, we'll come back to you. Uh, in terms of the manual, now before I forget, I will have a link to the B127 card. So I'll see if I can actually try and make this super simple. So given that this is, even though this came out before B127, obviously the instructions are going to be the same. So my huge grievance will be some of his weird little back kibbling in his legs, but that's okay. Who was 62 and 63 back in the day? Sad ways and tops. Gosh, if I ever start going through the uh, Transformer movies of figures, should keep me with content going right through to 2024. Uh, rest of the instructions, once again, I'm not going to spend too much time on it because this was the original version of the mob, but I have done B127. So that was the manual, nothing too overly fancy. Uh, the accessory, which we have seen a few times. So this is pretty much painted in black, well black plastic, with the silver applied to the front barrel. And that will attach very nicely to Cliff Jumper's hand. And actually looks quite well blended given the black on his arm, so 
it actually does work very nicely. Okay, so cliff jumper. Oh, your legs are going to annoy me already, but that's okay. Just fix up your feet now. I do know that you will actually stand on your own two feet, so I'm not overly worried. Okay, so cliff jumper from the front. Yes, I will keep his weapon attached for the time being because it's not overly in the way. So front, side, back, the other side. And just a nice close-up on the detailing on his face and his main torso. The head is very nice. Although I don't know why. I feel like his head has just juts out at a very weird angle. I feel like it should be just a little bit lower profile-wise, but maybe it's just me. It's not terrible, but it's just what I'm visually picking up on. And yes, this is going to annoy me because I'm trying to get his feet to look a bit more aligned. In fact, these bits here on his legs actually aren't be as difficult as B127 was, but oh well. Anyway, that was the quick pseudo 360 of Cliff Jumper. In terms of his colours, pretty much red and black, uh, which is nice. I know that actually works out very well for him. He does have a bit of the silver and the blue uh, just to add a bit more colour. We do have some clear see-through plastic as well, as well as some extra painted black throughout. So overall, uh, and yes, as I mentioned earlier, I am very biased to black and red. From a color perspective, I definitely prefer this color scheme on this mold than I did B127, but that's okay. Um, articulation, I'm just literally just going to go full on do whatever um mainly because check the original b127 film video uh head 360 up and down all sorts that's not too bad it's actually a really pretty good thing uh arm eh, not quite 360 but definitely gets around does go to the side elbow bend uh nothing else moves in the arm torso eh, torso can do some weird spinny stuff Legs can go so far out, leg can go so far forward, leg can go so far back. Leg can bend. Um, just be careful when you do that because you are liable to disrupt the fine balance of some of those panels. And I believe the foot, yeah, foot can go up and down. And I believe the foot does have some spins, just that. This ball socket in here is a bit on the uh, stiff side, but the foot does have a good amount of articulation as well. So, yes, he does have a good amount of articulation when panels and things aren't coming undone, etc, etc. Um, I'm pretty sure I've done something weird and janky. That's okay. So. Yes, overall, you can definitely do some things, which is pretty cool, and yeah, definitely not too bad. If you did want a more comprehensive look, as I said, go check out the B127 video where I did not literally try and do the articulation in the span of like a minute and a half. Anyway, now that the articulation has been done, I will do the transformation, and we can have a very quick look at his alt mode, given that it's just in red and black, and then I'll have some final thoughts which will probably be very similar to B127. Okay, and with Cliff Jumper in his alt mode, now I'm just going to chalk this up because I've now had enough experience with B127. That actually was really smooth. Now I didn't time myself, but it actually felt relatively quick. And that's saying something. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe it's because, once again, with the experience of B127, I'm actually used to this now. And I don't know, it just actually did feel somewhat better, even though it's the exact same mold, just in a different color. But anyway, uh, cliff jumper from the front, the side, the back, the other side, the top, the bottom. 
and I have stowed his weapon into his little storage component area as well. I didn't do the storage in his robot mode, but that's okay. Um, definitely won't talk about too much about this. I mean, articulation is just pretty much his wheels being a vehicle. Um, but otherwise, yeah, the transformation for me this time around was actually a lot more seamless and um, fluidic. And yes, I am just going to chalk it up to the fact that I've had experience with B127 now, so I actually do know where things should actually go. Mm. That video was also some time ago, so I'm surprised I actually remembered most of that. Um, now, I will admit, I do like this in the red. It'd be one of the few times I actually wouldn't mind just like going through and really emphasizing some of the detailing that is on Cliff Jumper. I'm not going to, but he'd be one of the few figures I wouldn't mind doing that to. Uh, but the red main chassis does look very nice. The black on the tires does help as well, especially some of the black and the darker grey here on the front of his... Uh, I was going to say bumper. Mm, I guess we can say bumper. And even the clear plastic isn't too bad on the top as well. So, yeah, I, I, I just prefer it in red there's no really darting around it so yeah there we go um obviously i did mention the wheels do work as well so that is that um since he's in his vehicle mode and since i have it over here uh cliff jumper in his vehicle mode against his backdrop in fact if i do it this way what does it look like not the best but it is very quick, so that was very nice to see that. So, cliff jumper there, um, and your manual. So, I'll try and just do some really super condensed final thoughts on this. So, cliff jumper, robot mode, um, standard articulation. The colors I actually do prefer on this mold, um, so everything worked out quite nicely. Still not too sure what was happening with the head. It just feels like it should be just that, even on the art, it just feels like it should just come down just a little touch. Um, I would have said it for B127. He has kibbling. The back is it's okay. The leg kibble is probably a little less forgiving, but it wasn't too bad for Cliff Jumper. Um, but I did notice there were plenty of times where I accidentally moved something or touched something and just dislodges that leg kibbling, kibble, 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 kibbling, kibble. And yeah, so robot mode, it's okay overall. It just has a bit more kibble than desired. Desirable? Desired? English is difficult today. Um, transformation, it's definitely one of those, and I do remember it now. Uh, the first time will feel a bit weird, but more practice, and it's actually not a problem. So for the number of times I would have done B127, and now this single attempt at Cliff Jumper, it does get easy over time. And yeah, I actually was quite surprised. Everything for Cliff Jumper actually did tab quite nicely. I feel, anecdotally, that B127 and tabbing didn't seem to go as well, but I could be mistaken. As I mentioned before, the video was some time ago. Um, alt mode for Cliff Jumper. It's, it's a very nice Cybertronian mode. I do actually like the look of it, especially in the red with some of the black trims and accents. But that's just me with my preference towards the colors red and black. Um, but I would actually be very tempted to just keep Cliff Jumper in his alt mode because I do quite like it and probably just have a B127 in the robot mode. Um, Toffs at that, and that'll be what I would really need for my collection, to be honest. So, being released 64 Cliff Jumper is probably very difficult to find now, at least at standard retail. It's probably still floating around eBay, probably floating around Amazon and a few other places like that. Uh, just expect the price to be higher than what it was. Um, I'd still say Cliff Jumper is still a nice addition to the Transformers Bumblebee collection side of things. And 
who actually might be like me and just find the color palette for Cliff Jumper um, it's more enjoyable than the color palette for Bumblebee. So in the end it's really up to you if you want, want to try and find him and to make the leap to get him. Now I do know there's a new Cliff Jumper figure coming out uh, in the upcoming months, although that's from a different version of War for Cybertron, that's obviously from the game, as opposed to uh, Transformers Bumblebee and its depiction of a war on Cybertron. Or War for Cybertron, either, either. Um, so that'll be cool. Uh, now that I have this cliff jumper out of the box, probably when the time comes, I'll do um, maybe not a comparison, um, but at minimum, maybe a short together. But who knows, maybe a comparison will happen. I'm going to leave the video there because there's probably nothing else of value to contribute that I haven't mentioned previously at the B127. Um, and yeah, so yes, Cliff Jumper overall, pretty solid figure. Um, if you want him, get him. I'm glad I have him. Um, but at the same time, it's still a very interesting model. Thank you very much for watching this unboxing and review video of Studio Series Deluxe Class Cliff Jumper. Feel free to leave a like or comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the content. All of this does help support the channel and I do greatly appreciate it. Extra content can also be found on my Instagram account, and to that is in the description below. And if by chance you didn't know, there will also be a supplementary short of Cliff Jumper uh, to coincide with the release of this unboxing and review. With that being said, stay safe and take care, and I will catch you all in either next week's uh, typical Friday Transformers Bumblebee unboxing, which will be once again back to Dropkick and or Shatter. I do have a few more Transformer videos related to Rise of the Beasts to try and record and publish in the upcoming days, at least within when this goes live otherwise there's still plenty of other content that i'm trying to push through as well so either way hopefully there's something on the channel that you would like to watch until the next time see ya